you, Ben, and a big thank you to you both. What an amazing conversation to witness. Rachel, what's your immediate reaction after that? Um, I've, I feel lighter and I feel joyful for the first time in ages. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, it was, um, it was deep, which I loved, and it was, um, felt very transformative and um, uh, it uncovered some things um, that I've been thinking about it, but it glued it together in a different way, glued it together in a, in a, in a where to move forward. Let's look at the possibilities sort of way. Mm, yeah. Couldn't help but, sent, but feel like there's a sense of surprise out of this conversation. I'm wondering, is, is there, what surprised you about this conversation today? Oh, that I recognise that I never ask for help. So asking mm. for clarity, I suppose, feels like a weakness. I mean, it doesn't make sense logically because you know you need clarity to do your job. But it's going to someone going, okay, so so yeah, so that was a surprise for me. Is that um, uh, yeah, that I'm pretty stinking at asking for help, and um, and speaking up and asking for help. Mm. Yeah. That was probably the main um, and possibly the um the um had how long well, this has gone on for, which is you know, from a logic perspective, if this was a case study in a textbook, you'd be like, just go and ask your manager for clarity. Um but, but for me, this has gone on for like six months. Yeah, yeah. And, and what is it like for you now to be able to uncover this? It sounds like it was being unconscious for quite a while now, but to be able to see it in front of you, to almost be able to maneuver it now with your hands and do something with it. There's a there's a there's a softness with it. There's a sort of a gentleness with it. Um, it sort of feels um, squishy, <laughs> like like <laughs> candy floss. I feel, it does feel like I can take it and go I can squish it this way, and I can. There's it went from a block of concrete. Um, a lit, uh, to being something that's pink and fluffy and um, and malleable and and um, uh, and and full of possibilities and options rather than a never-ending cycle around the block of concrete that I couldn't couldn't maneuver past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a beautiful shift to be able to get from that concrete into this pink, fluffy, squishy thing that's malleable and, and you can change around. I think that's beautiful. And if you were to reflect upon the conversation that you just had, what do you think were the most significant moments where you could feel kind of that concrete soften up and, and start to become that little mushy kind of malleable feeling? It was probably the tricky questions Ben was asking me that I, my brain didn't quite understand. And um, I think the words he was using, where does it, where, it, where does it sit with you? Or, and, and my brain was going, well, where's it sitting? Is it sitting in my body? Um, so, and, and he kept going around and kept dropping down further into those questions, um, which sort of uncovered something deeper. Um, and it also got to that really uncomfortable feeling that's been my block, which is this sort of this, um that really yucky feeling I go <laughs> um uh why is it anyone listening to me I'm I've got a lot to say um so there's sort of two ends to this as I as I sort of play with it so it was it was the, the types of questions that Ben was asking that really helped me to uncover that deeper stuff yeah yeah there's a couple of points there that you mentioned that really interest me the first one is it's like your, your, your logical brain got challenged. What, do you, what did you notice about your logical brain as we got deeper into this conversation? Um, uh, th there just wasn't space for it, really. Um, yeah. I had to stay in the feeling space. I had to stay in the deeper space because my logical HR brain um, kept in and out. But what I noticed is I just stayed there longer and then deeper and deeper to actually uncover what really was going on. 
um, and the logical brain was fighting. Yeah. <laughs> it was having a wee fisty cuff in the background. And that's probably the, bit, the aspect when I popped out at some stage, I went, oh, let's go back to being logical because it's uncomfortable. Um, and then I could tell when I was deeper because I was sort of, my voice changes and I was sort of more um, reflective. So yeah, there was a lot of deep reflection in there. Yeah, yeah. If you were to reflect on that logical brain, what, what do you think it was trying to do for you in that moment as it was, as it was struggling to hold on? It was, it was like fighting. <laughs> it was fighting with me. It's like, no, no, go. You know, it was, it was, it, it was just, it was, it was having a little battle in there. Yeah. Um, it was having a bit of a tanty. Um, 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 and it was not, it was, it was, it was telling me, don't go there, it's unsafe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was trying to hold on. I was trying to hold on the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny how you mentioned, oh, it's a little bit unsafe, wanting to hold on, wanting to fight. What is it allowed, what was it allowed, that, that allowed you, whether it was from the coach, from yourself, to move into the uncomfortable space? Oh, def definitely the types of questions Ben were asking, was asking. Yeah. And, and and circling around when I got stuck and just sitting and giving me lots of time to answer. And then within me, there was a determination to go there because I really wanted to uncover this blockage that was preventing me from being good at doing my job. Yeah. Yeah. And being able to just reflect on all this now, what are you starting to now really appreciate about the transformative coaching process? Um, that it, um, uh, that, what do I, I do really appreciate it because it's, um, there's a whole, there's a whole journey at play through this. If you allow yourself to be present, to being important on being present is, is super, super important. Um, and the gentleness with which Ben helped me navigate, which was incredibly uncomfortable feelings, um, and and also the humour that he brought to this mm. to the to the, to the uh, conversation it doesn't have to be deadly serious. <laughs> right. So um, and that's fantastic. It's like the joy in him helping me navigate this journey made me feel incredibly safe. He's so joyful and it was just it was a real blessing to experience someone holding me through that space um i've got goosebumps um as as he allowed me to navigate which was something that was really uncomfortable for me yeah yeah, yeah. i can really sense how much his presence and his ability to to just hold that space for you and to be there with you along the process has has really touched you and I'm wondering, how does that inspire you with your own coaching and your own wanting to be there for other people? Because you are a leader. Nice segue. <laughs> nice segue to being a leader. I like that. Um, it does. It really inspires me to remind myself to be present in situations and to be leaderful. Um, and conscious about how I'm interacting with people and being able to bring humour to a situation rather than a sense of frustration or disappointment or whatever it is, um, and how actually humour and presence uh, 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 and consciousness um, is just completely transformative in and of itself. And how I could try and be more of that at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, I could see you're really closing your eyes, digging deep, and the wise woman that we uh, we spoke about in the conversation, she just came out then. She came out to play then. <laughs> she, she snuck out. The wounded child went away. <laughs> yeah. The wise woman came forward. I could see that. I could see that. Awesome. And with that last sigh of uh, I said that last sigh of relief, what would you like to say to your 
to Ben or your coach before we finish up this interview? Oh, look, Ben, I'm incredibly grateful for um, uh, your humour and wisdom and insightfulness and, and what felt to me to be deep listening and patience. Thank you for the thank you for your patience. I need I needed I needed someone who could hold me long enough to to let it come out. Thank you. That was amazing. Very good. Thank you so much, uh, Rachel. So again, that that finishes the interview. Is, is it okay if we use this as a case study just to learn from, and you can join us as a student? If that's all right with you. Yep, that'll be great. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank Excellent. you, Evan. Evan, the uh, Mentimeters has a lot of great contribution. Would you like to read for of us? Of course. Thank sure. you. Okay, so let's see what we've all come up with today. So firstly, the, sharp, the coach is sharp in observing how the client is experiencing her ex experience and avoiding all the details. The presence of the coach is waiting and allowing the client to process her thinking. The process is gentle, focused, and deep in many ways, a combination of evocative and provocative to challenge and clarify. Lovely. Love the way the coach explores the client's experience with the situation, directing the conversation towards her. When the client got to a block, the coach navigated to another focus, which is easy to explore. Some great learnings. Two sides of the coin. First, that the coach start. Love that one. The way the coach drove the conversation asking the same question three times, which helped the client really deal with an issue that made her feel uncomfortable. I'm amazed at how the coach did not impose on the client and to answer the question, yes, we did notice that. I see how the coach uses uh, use questions as a tool to expand the mind, explore the meaning and not to elicit an, an answer. I love the emphasis there. The repeated questions, which part of you, the presence of the coach, his care in accompanying the client through her journey. He appreciated the client's metaphors and effort in processing her experience, being with her as painstakingly peels through her personal layers. We saw so much trust and safety and coaching presence from the coach here. The coach reflected in essence only one or two ideas. It is more than 10 words, but it is succinct and concise and it does not distract the client or noisy how the client got into the closing of a door and opening of a door and the coach clarifying what doors are being referred to yeah definitely love that part the coach maintains the curiosity through the conversation help the client to explore each information then support the client to give them back together metaphors nice way of challenging the thought nice one i appreciate the masterfulness and mastery of applying the principles at the moment adapting into the flow and choosing what is most appropriate based on how the client responded. Most impressed with the metaphor of holding the key and the importance of being heard to open the door versus close the door and supporting the client. So another big fan of that one. Ben's humor and presence dancing with the client in the moment. I can see the personhood of the coach who Ben embodies as a real person and not a coach. He is who he is and what he believes. And most importantly, how he integrates himself and science as one. Wow. The science and art works as one as the coach masterfully mastered the craft. The coaching process is a demonstration of how the science works and also needs to understand the science and learning how to apply it. Amazing. The coach, the way the coach took the client to feel safe and take her on the journey of discovery, something that she was uncomfortable confronting. The way the coach allowed the client to reassess her decision, a decision point that she got to in wanting to close the door to which she later realized it was not the door that she wanted to close. Huge point there. And finally, the patience definitely may have been so easy to keep going. Thanks everyone for your wonderful contributions and insights. Oh, great. So uh, Evan, is that a good time for 